Good morning, everyone. Well, I have returned from the Baltimore Pen Show experience, which you can tell by my inky fingers. Not that they were inky yesterday, but they were inky two days ago, and now I'm fixing pens, so they're inky now. But there was a little joke we were, if, you know, people in the at the bar at the hotel after afterwards we had to prove we were in the pen show not by showing pens but by showing our inky fingers they get inky not through normal use of pens but through fussing with them and making sure the the nib is set right and things like that uh, most customers at a pen show don't end up with inky fingers. It's the dealers. Or in my case, the I can't wait till I get home to do this. I have to start playing with these things now. So, I just wanted to show you a few things that I got recently at the pen show. I went to a junk box and found junk. Now, junk boxes you don't find very much anymore at a show. They used to be more plentiful now and in a junk box. Junk boxes are somewhat aptly named because from the point of view of the owner of the box it's useless stuff for them but for people like me I can find all sorts of usable parts in a pen that is placed there. There were three pens though, these this these two and this one over here that is soaking that I bought just on a whim. They're modern pens. One's a hero, one's a wing sow, one is a something else. And I thought, well let me just before I keep condemning these pens, let me find out whether I actually like them. So and I try I try to like any pen. Um, any pen has value, I guess, unless it's just completely unusable, unworkable. So there's a Wing Sung. Wing Sung. Did I say Wing Sao? Wing Sung. Um, it's sort of a faux 51 thing, some sort of squeezy filler on it. And it seems to, to write and it seems to be relatively smooth so maybe these aren't bad one of the things that we we cannot tell because our crystal balls don't work is just how these are going to hold up when they get to be as old as a Parker 51 where's my Parker 51 here's, here's a Parker 51 so this is 40, 50, 60 years old 70 years, something like that, and it's still writing. Is this even going to be around then? Is the nib going to rust? Is the clip going to fall off? Is the plastic going to just disintegrate one day? We don't know that because our crystal balls don't go that far in the future. This is a hero pen. It's funny, you know, there could be fake hero pens out there. Hero pens are relatively cheap to begin with, but someone might be making fake ones. Now, what, how did, why did that happen? Why is this happening with that pen? Maybe just because I dipped it? Or is there a leak somewhere? Again, it seems to be fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It does what it's supposed to do. Um, this may have the same crystal ballage that, you know, unknown quantity may cause trauma but both of them seem to be fine this last one is an unknown quantity i don't know who made it ap it says on the clip that's all it says and its nib is one of these that slides in and it was clogged and i just wanted to show you something and i, I don't really know whether you can see it but can you see can you see that? The feed was something it can focus on here. A dollar. 
the feed has a very, very minute, thin channel, ink channel. And that is a common design of most many modern pens. And it just doesn't have enough it may not have enough of a of a channel to actually convey the ink as fast as I need it to be conveyed. If I wrote very slow and very small, it might be perfectly fine. But if I start doing this, sometimes it'll skip. I've found on modern pens that have this kind of a feed. But it may be fine. However, it may not be fine or it may more easily clog in which case you're in trouble but anyway these pens these three pens will go into my junk box not so much junk box but these will be pens that I might end up giving to someone if someone's at my table and they have a small child and the adult in the room if there's you know, a, a parent and a child and me at a table. There's only one adult in the room. The parent of the child. I, I'm worse than a child, as my ex-boyfriend would say. Um, but if sometimes I will give the other child a pen like this just for free to keep them quiet while the parent of the child is spending money with me. Um, I don't often do that. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I give them a pencil. Not to keep them quiet, but to keep them interested, I guess. And if they have something of their own, they they become involved in the parents' process of deciding what to buy, um, or what they want. I usually try to... I usually ask the parent whether I may do this because, you know, maybe they are trying to train their child to be polite and not to be rewarded for being antsy. I don't know. I usually try to say, you know, whisper, might I give your child a pen? And they will say, oh yes. The child then whispers to me, could you give my father a pen? No, I, I don't do that. They don't do that. They're so anyway, these may end up being, you know, baby's first pen, in which case these will work fine for that purpose, I think. If they last a little bit, that'll be fine. They don't have to necessarily last forever. Um, I often feel in some ways that I'm the drug dealer at the playground giving away free marijuana because I know they'll be back for not only more marijuana that they'll pay for but they'll you know start buying the crack and all the all, all the expensive stuff that I make more money on I'm joking you in the police department uh, I'm making a little joke and um, so these these are good for that too, not only for instilling an interest in fountain pens and writing and drawing in uh, young people who are too busy playing their Donkey Kong or whatever those games are on their devices. These are, these are perfectly good for that. So, relatively, I'm pretty happy with these pens. They, they, do, they do what pens are supposed to do make a line. Okay, done with that. No. Now let's go to the next thing. <clears throat> I got this pen and this pencil recently. Not at the pen show, but I got it recently and I thought, well, since it's here on my desk, I'll show you something that you can look for. Look for, look, look at as you're looking at wall ever sharp pens specifically wall ever sharp pens that are metal um, because they have a fatal flaw 
And <clears throat> that flaw is this little line right there that you see often raised up halfway up the clip. Come on, George. Help, help them see this line. You see that line? Well, that line is... If you could see through this pen, you'd see an inner cap that goes from here down to there. And then the section would, of the barrel would start there and go back. So at that juncture between the inner cap and that barrel, moisture or ink or both can collect. And it's sitting there in your desk drawer, in your pocket, and it starts corroding the metal at that juncture from the inside. And eventually, in the fullness of time, if it, you keep doing that, you'll end up with it actually breaking through the surface. And you'll see it eventually causing this to happen. Separation from stage one to stage two. So look for that. Otherwise you're going to have this happen. There's, in my collection of pens that have had trauma to them, I show this homemade repair where someone went to the trouble of getting a gold fill or a solid gold, I don't know what this is, band put on the pen. And I guess it's just friction fit here, which is fine. It works it works nicely and it shows a um, ingenuity is a necessity is the mother invented they they fixed it. And I think they did a rather lovely job. But this one is going to turn into one of those, so I'm going to have to figure out how I'm going to fix that. Um, if, if this is happening to one of your pens, what I would recommend is that you don't really carry it in your pocket. You try not to uh, put any strain on the cap more than you need to. Um, try not to try to hold it here when you're screwing the cap on rather than holding it here because you're, you'd add stress so just hold it there when you're in it'll last another decade or half an hour or whatever whenever this is but the crystal ball has a specific point at which this will fail and it may be changed by taking care of it. Um, this pen has, it looked like it was going to be a good nib. I bought it on eBay so I couldn't test it out. And it is in fact a good nib, but not for calligraphy. It's good for draw, for more for drawing. The fine is not as delicate as a calligrapher would want, but it's really good for drawing. It's not supposed to splatter like that, but I'm, I'm, I'm not really looking at the pen, I'm looking at the camera, so I would know not to hold the pen the way I just did, I guess. So there it is, a nice rubbery number four wall nib. So I'll put a sack on that and I'll use it or perhaps sell it to an artist who will draw beautiful pictures with it. And of course I'll let them know about this issue. And chances are it won't make any difference to them, those artists. They've got other things on their mind. Another pen I, I, I bought at the show was this one. This is a universal. Is that what it is? Hold on, let me look under the light loop. No. Yes. 
It's a Uniflow pen made by the Universal Pen Company. And I don't know why it's called that. I have no idea. It has, it's, it's, this is the pen that, it looks like the pen that East Germany would have made. You know, it's almost entirely boring. The only sort of decorative detail it has is on the clip. And in between those two little lines is a recessed area that is stipple. It's a little tiny stipple pattern on it, which they could have left plain and it wouldn't have made very much difference, but it's actually kind of a nice little design. This has a nice rubbery uh, gold nib, great for an artist or for me. I may put it in my collection. I, I, I'm sure I have one of these, but I, I don't know. I will find out. If not, I will put it in my drawer for artist pens. Another pen I got is this one, which I need to reset the feed. This is a secretary pen uh, from Newark, New Jersey. And what is interesting about this? Almost nothing, I'm sure, but... It, it does have a gold nib, and it is somewhat flexible, and the gold nib is marked secretary. So, uh, it looks like it had a gold band here, which has since been lost to history. It's sort of a funny-looking pen. It has a weird cap issue there going on, you know, where the cap gets narrow and then it juts out. I don't know, maybe is that supposed to help you get it out of your pocket easier? Is that a design element that someone thought of, or is that just the guy on the extruder device sneezing and it didn't quite extrude correctly, or however these pens were made? Um, it, I need to reset the, the, the feed and the nib are a little bit apart, so I have to reset the, uh, reshape the feed a little bit. But this is another pen that would be good. Where's my faux ink? My fink. A good for an artist and a writer. Not, it's not uh, fine enough or delicate enough for a calligrapher, but it's a perfectly good rubbery nib for an artist or for my collection if I don't have one of these already. Um, so, let me just show you one more pen. This is a pen I got on eBay, and it has the wrong nib in it. it. I don't know, there's all sorts of problems. It has all sorts of chips along the cap lip, which I hope I can file down so it's not so snaggletoothed. Um, just so it looks prettier. I think it'll still work as a, it'll still hold on the back of the pen as well as it's doing here. I may actually have a cap that isn't snaggletoothed. And um, have yet another one of these pens in my collection. This is one of those, uh, you, I don't know if you can see, there's red veining through this. And it came with a pencil. A matching pencil. So this has one of those typical Schaefer nibs, which is nail-like. Oh, I stand corrected. It is not entirely nail-like. It has a little tiny bit of give, and um. See, this is what you this is what you need to do. You can't just look at a nib. You have to try it out. You have to actually dip it in ink and see if it has something going for it. I would not have thought this nib would have been able to do that. 
So if you want a nib that does that, this is the kind of nib you want, I guess. I'm, I'll finish with a little story that I heard of the... I'll illustrate this story. <clears throat> so there was a guy at the bar. I'm not going to illustrate him because I don't want to be sued. No, I... He, he was not atypical of the pen collecting community in general. Um, so, if I'll draw a generic person. Here's the, here's the dealer. Dealer. Here's the buyer. Here's the pen in question. And the dealer, as many dealers do at pen shows, the dealer mentioned the pen by name. It was a blah, blah, blah. And then the dealer continued to talk about essentially the amount of money he was able to sell, sell the pen for. Money, money, money. Money, money. There were a lot of dollar signs because this was a very expensive pen. And it wasn't just one pen, it was three of them. So multiply these dollar signs by three and then add about 6,000 more and you'll get the, the import of, this, of the price of this pen. Yes, this is a rare pen, and three of them were three times rarer. Or is it one-third rarer, rarer if there were three? They were Sterling Overlay Waterman 20s. One was Sterling Over, Sterling Silver over Red Hard Rubber, one was over Black Hard Rubber, and one was over Mottled Hard Rubber. And the Hard Rubber... I mean, the it was it. They're expensive pens. They're big, they're huge, huge pens, big. They're, I should. I don't own one, but they're like bigger than this. Big. They're big, and they're rare, and they're expensive. And this buyer you know, has, owns, like, Liechtenstein or something. He's, you know, owns a lot. He's a European buyer that, that owns factories, and I don't know what he, I can't remember what he does, but he's a big buyer. And this guy said, after he sold him these pens, as if to tell me, tell the listeners that this guy was crazy, which is not a good thing to do. Why would you call a customer of yours crazy? He said, and the guy wanted to write with him. Well, I wanted to point out to this person that that's what you do with pens. You write with them. It's not going to, he's not going to hurt the pen by writing with them. Unless he, you know, writes underwater for some reason, which he wouldn't do. He would, you know, writing with him would be fine. Now, if he said, it was as if he said, the guy's going to use it as a stake for his tent. Then I would have had the same feeling of revulsion that this guy had when he said the guy writes with him. It really pissed me off, and I just sat there drinking my non-alcoholic water. Had I been drinking beer or some other thing, and I would have told him a thing or two. No, I, I would have been polite, but I, I just don't understand what the... Can you explain it to me? Why would someone say... Why would this dealer say, sort of with amazement and a little tiny bit of disgust, like, how dare you write with a pen that I sold you for 
20 million dollars or whatever the price was. Of course he write, w wants to write with them. You know, this guy has a big fancy desk that he sits at. The desk is not just a card table. It's a big oak, you know, hand-carved thing. He sits on a leather chair that's thousands of dollars. He's wearing a suit that's thousands of dollars. Does this guy, this guy was probably wearing a suit that was thousands of dollars when he was talking to me about this. And he probably drives a car that's worth many more thousands of dollars than it needs to be. And yet he drives it. Why would he be upset and shocked that someone wanted to write with a pen? Write your answers below. I really want to know. Please tell me so I can understand what he was saying. <sighs> okay, I'm going to calm, calm. Thanks for watching. Toodaloo.